what the hell is small creator boxing when it comes to youtube boxing you've got misfits boxing you've got mvp with jake paul you've got social knockout you even have some of the weird ones like wicked and bad they all have their problems however there is a new contender in the race of influencer boxing promotions and they've only just had their second event and it went down a treat ladies and gentlemen i'm talking about scb aka small creator boxing it's exactly what it sounds like it's boxing for small creators who want to get into the influencer boxing scene but just don't have the numbers that other big name influencers have what this means is that everyone on a small creator boxing card isn't in it for the money they're in it purely for the raw passion of fighting, which you've got to commend. I mean, you get, you get so many promotions now and fighters who are only in it for the money. I mean, just look at Social Gloves. The whole event and fights were just made to make money. But SCB is different. And today, I'm going to be going over the first two events, SCB 001 and SCB 002. And we're going to be rating them out of 10 and we're going to be comparing them to other boxing promotions. And we're just going to be reviewing them. So really get their name out there. Let's get it. Double ah! one was pretty goofy. I mean, train strikes were happening on the day of the fight. And no one really knew how to get around it. So half the SCB team couldn't even show up to the event. Meaning that they had to record the whole live stream on a completely different camera to what they were going to use. This led the stream to look a little sloppy and a little blurry, but apart from that, it's actually pretty good. The presenters were good, the commentary was good, there's not a lot that was really wrong with it on that side of things, it's just the technical aspect that faltered quite a bit. The build-up was really good because no one at this time even knew if this whole event was going to happen. Everyone was saying it was a fever dream, it was a pipe dream, you couldn't make it a reality, they didn't have the funds, they didn't have the passion to really make it a reality, and they did. They had press conferences, a weigh-in. I'm sure it's going to, you know, try its best, and it's, it's definitely not going to try and give up, I know that. But, you know, it's just, there's a difference in it, like, you know, Finn, I actually quite like Finn, I think he's a cool guy. Uh, but, you know, from what I've heard on podcasts and stuff, I know, like, he had to take a half hour break in between sparring sessions because uh, he was too anxious to get in the ring. You know, I know he got knocked out in sparring. I don't know. What they had all this shit that you normally expect from YouTube boxing, and it was on basically zero budget. And not only that, but it looked good. It was a good promotion. People promoted those entertaining figures. But when it comes to the behind the scenes stuff, there was a lot of pullouts, like, a lot of pullouts. Originally, there were supposed to be nine fights, I believe, but it whittled down to four, and one of the fights almost didn't happen. Connor Kelly versus Fez was the first fight. Fez and Connor Kelly were both not on the card at this point, but because there was only three fights available, because so many people had to pull out due to the strange strikes, that they ended up just putting them two in, just as a filler fight, basically. Fez isn't even a creator, and Connor Kelly wasn't supposed to be on the card due to some reason, I don't know. But that was the fight to kick us off. And it was a pretty dull one, just because the fight ended in one round by referee stoppage, but the ref called off the fight, in my opinion, way too early. I mean, Fez was beating Connor up for like the first maybe 30 seconds, and the ref stepped in to wave it off, but there was other fights on the same night that had similar outcomes where one guy was just beating the life out of the other, and the ref didn't stop it, so I'm not sure what that's about. But regardless, the first fight was out of the way, and on to the next. The second undercard fight was Callum Kelly versus Chapel. This ended in a knockout with body shots from Callum Kelly hitting Chapel constantly in the corner. Chapel just couldn't take the body shots and fell. And he just quit on the, on the floor, basically. I believe he probably could have gotten up just from watching the event live. It looked more like he gave up mentally than physically. But regardless, Callum Kelly got a nice knockout to add to his record. Chapel, unfortunately, took the L. Callum Kelly actually threw up right after he won the fight as well. And I'm, I mean, like, literally just as the referee hit 10 on his fingers to count Chapel out, Callum Kelly threw up which is just like, Chapel got up off his ass, and Callum Kelly threw up, then Chapel would have won the fight. <laughs> the fights were pretty goofy, to say the least. Wait a minute. That's me! 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I was the co-main event on SCB-001. It was me versus Finn Maguire, and they really didn't want me to win. <laughs> I simply wanted it more and just had the aggression, and that put Finn into a bad position where he was coming across someone who was better technically than him, wanted the fight more, wanted to win more, and just, just beat him up, really. I won the fight. It was a four-round fight. I won it. 35, 40 on the scorecards. I got one knockdown, one every round. It was great. Everyone said it was five the night. Finn's good movement was enough to keep me from knocking him out because every time that I got a flurry on him, he managed to find a way to slip away. So his movement was actually really good. Uh, he just didn't have the aggression or boxing IQ to get around me and get in close and hurt me. Every time he got close, one of us would clinch, usually him, sometimes me. And it would just turn into a stalemate for that moment. But the main event, holy moly. Tolbster versus Aaron the Carrot. Okay, this was crazy. Aaron the Carrot was a huge underdog going into this. Tolbster was talking about how he wanted to fight Fred Talks Fighting. He wanted to fight uh, Fox the G on Misfits. He was doing all this. Aaron the Carrot just came in, called himself the Carrot. Uh, he was the, actually the biggest person there with almost 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I think he's surpassed that now. Iron the Carrot came in tall, skinny. Tolster came in short, jacked. And it was a scrap. And when I say scrap, I mean, what the fuck? I mean, seriously, what was happening? Like, there was headlocks, there was pushes, there were back of the head shots, there were spine punches, there was knockdowns, it was crazy. Eventually, Tolster retired on the stool. I think in between round two and three, or it might have been between three and four. I think it was so energetic, so much adrenaline, so much happening. It was non-stop. There was no breaks in between punches. They were just swinging at each other. Neither really knew what they were doing, but they were just going to take each other's fucking head off. And I loved it. It was by far the most entertaining fight in all of SCB history, counting one and two. Dead ass. I give SCB1 an 8 out of 10 on the fucking thing. Ah! Holy shit, SCB002's production was crazy. The camera angles, madness. Commentating, madness. The announcer, madness. The whole thing, madness. Great stuff. 10 out of 10. Okay, let's actually review the fight. Quick fire, let's go. Dan Talks fighting versus Hodgkiss. This fight was pretty good. Dan Talks fighting was actually really likable outside the ring. I think he's quite cool. Good fight. Dan Talks fighting won. Let's get it. Ben Wheeler versus Afro Samurai. Afro Samurai came in on like a week's notice, never boxed before. Came in, gave it his best shot. Eventually, Ben Wheeler's experience just in sparring and training caught up to Samurai. And Ben Wheeler ended up getting a TKO with a, I think it was a retirement from Afro Samurai's part. Brandon the Titan ended up fighting a mystery opponent who turned out to be Ethan GBT UK. And Brandon showed his real experience in there in combat sport and beat Ethan with a TKO in the first round. Ethan didn't really know what to do in there. He didn't know how to move. And it is what it is. Cowboy Stu versus Anton Bell. Believe it or not, I've actually fought on the same card as Cowboy Stu before in 2022 so that's pretty crazy but this was a fight of the head guards because everyone's head guard kept fucking falling off and they had to stop the fight every five seconds to put the head guard back on but in the end it was a corner retirement from cowboy halford sucks tried to put up as much of a good a fight against tommy pilkington as he could but unfortunately just didn't know what to do with his head movement and his lack of experience made him lose the fight uh you know but he's got some serious balls getting in there and i'm sure he'll be back the fight ended in a round two TKO for Tommy Pinkerton. The co-main was returning fighter Callum Kelly versus Anthony O'Shea. Callum Kelly ended up losing this fight on points and being knocked down in the fourth round. Anthony O'Shea won the fight. Congrats to him. Uh, he looked pretty good out there. Finally, JST fought Bad Boy Beeman in the main event of SCB-002, where JST tried to use his speed and agility to defeat Beeman, but Beeman's power and experience just outclassed Jay, and he ended up getting a third-round knockout in this fight. This is actually one of the best, if not the best, SCB fight in all of, like, SCB history, basically. 
Uh, the knockout was super clean as well. It's basically one of the best YouTube boxing knockouts. It was so clean and it was with headgear, which is just a testament to how good Bad Boy Beeman really is. With the caliber of great fights and how good the production was, I'm going to have to give SCB-002 a juicy 9 out of 10. It was pretty damn good. Not perfect, but it was pretty damn good. Thanks for watching, gamers. <laughs>